Hello, today we're going to start messing around with electromechanical devices. Uh, I got this little thingy off of eBay. It's a stepper motor and it has a little driver board to go along with it. I didn't get any data with the driver board, but basically it's just a carrier for that chip, so the data sheet for the chip just have to do. There's really not much to it anyway. Um, the stepper motor, if you just look there, it says that it's in designed to go to run on 5 volts. Uh, this is a 5 wire stepper motor and if you look around online you'll find that uh, generally those things are uh, w wired like this. This is called a unipolar stepper motor and the way that these things work is that as you can see each one of these is a little electromagnet and they're actually not arranged like that. They're arranged, well, you can think of them as being arranged um, in a circle like this. One, two, three, four. Uh, in fact, they're arranged inside the motor. The poles are essentially one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. They go around in a circle like that. Many, many steps. Um, it's not really important how that works internally. What matters is that the way these are designed to be used is that you put current between this wire. You notice that this wire is connected to one wire of all of the electromagnets and then the other wire of the electromagnet comes out. So that gives you your five wires. You put power between this wire and this wire and the um, armature, well, yeah, is this armature or stator? Armature, I think, of the motor, which is the moving part of the motor, jumps to line up with that one. Then you remove power from that one and you stick it on the next one and it jumps to that and it moves to that one. When you put power on that one, it moves to this one and then this one. And remember, they're, since they're arranged in a circle, there's another one of these coils effectively down here. So it just keeps going around in a circle and uh, it allows you to precisely control uh, the motor, the motion of the motor. You can make it run in either direction, you can make it stop, you can make it run at different speeds, uh, you can do whatever you want it to do. Uh, and generally, uh, if you're just running it in the simple mode, you can't, you basically have uh, the ability to make it move in whatever the, this amount of steps uh, uh, of the step is. It's typically something like 1.8 degrees per step or something like that, uh, which gives you 200 steps in a circle. Uh, anyway, uh, this board here, when I looked up the chip number, uh, it's a ULN 2003, I think, something like that. Uh, Basically, let me see if I got it up here. It's uh, there's really not much to it. No, there it is. 2003 APG. Um, it is basically just uh, these symbols here just indicate that it is. These are drivers. These are high current drivers. Since this is a five volt motor, you might think you could just hook it straight up to the output of uh, the uh, Arduino. But uh, that's actually a bad idea for a couple of reasons. One is because the Arduino really doesn't want to drive that much current. Um, I took my voltmeter and I measured the resistance between uh, this wire and this wire. And I got about 53 ohms, and if you work that out, it's about 100 milliamps. Um, 100 milliamps is really, really pushing it uh, for uh, the output of this. The other reason, though, is that um, this is something that you uh, have to deal with when you're dealing with uh, electromagnets or anything like that. It's what's called an inductive load. And the problem with that is that when you power it up, not a problem, but when you remove the power from it, you've got, an elect you've got a magnetic field built up in here. And when that magnetic field collapses, it's going to pump a bunch of voltage down this, this uh, wire. And that voltage could get up to many times of the supply voltage as the field collapses. 
you're putting five volts in and when you shut it off it might put a reverse voltage spike of 20, 25, 30 volts on that line and that could easily blow up your Arduino. Um, to combat that these have what's called, a, this is a protection diode here um, I don't know, they've got a lot of different names for them but this chip has built into it the protection diode that you need for that. Um, so this this actually has seven drivers. We were only using four in this case. There's uh, The board looks like it may have the ability to do more. But it's also got these cute LEDs, which I guess is fine. Um, I've got a uh, little sketch here that um, I put together. This is just a very, very simple demo. Uh, all it does is just stick uh, four of the lines into uh, output mode and then clears them all to zero. I'm also sticking pin 13 in output because that's the uh, LED on the Arduino and I'm just making the LED blink uh, once every time it goes through a full cycle just just as a sort of heartbeat so I can see what's going on. Um, so this just turns the LED on and then I've got a bunch of these little sections it's like put a one on pin two, wait whatever my delay is, and then put a zero on pin two, and then go down to the next pin. Um, and it just does that. It goes one, two, three, or two, three, four, five. Then it loops back around again and does two, three, four, five, and it just continues to do that. So this is the simplest possible uh, Arduino sketch to run this sort of thing. Um, I the, the other thing to keep in mind with stepper motors is that you can't run them too fast. If you run them at some point uh the magnetic fields can't uh come up and go back down again fast enough. There's a limit to with these coils. They are inductors and you just can't pump them up and expect them to collapse back down again fast enough and uh the motor will just stop moving. Uh, you're basically, as far as it's concerned, all of the magnets are actuated at the same time because they haven't had a chance to collapse until you turn them back on again. Um, I was fiddling around with it in about three milliseconds between each one is about the most that I can do. So uh, I'm just going to plug the power into this and you'll see that it just, right now all it's doing is moving. So that seems to be about as fast as this thing's able to move. The other thing too is that this is not a high torque motor. Um, you can pretty easily just stop it with your fingers. I've the stepper motors I usually work with with a 3D printer. Um, those things are not easy to stop at all. You have to put like a pair of vice grips on them to stop them. Uh, but they draw more like an amp, amp and a half instead of uh, a tenth of an amp. That this one does. Now, one thing I should mention is that uh, you'll see that we're powering this right now. This is where the power goes into this board, and it says 5 to 12 volts. The boards can handle 5 to 12 volts. The motor only really wants 5, so we're running it at 5 volts. And we're powering it right now off the Arduino. Now, normally, if you're powering um, motors, that's not really a good idea because the Arduino really isn't intended to power high current devices like that. Normally you would have a separate power supply going into this. Uh, you'd want to have a common ground between them because otherwise you need to have a common ground so that the digital logic can talk properly between the Arduino and this. Uh, the, uh, if, if you don't have a common ground then uh, this chip doesn't know what the Arduino is talking about when it's sending voltages over to it. Uh, Anyway, you would, if you were powering, a, a, let's say, a, a big, big stepper motor and you had some kind of an, some other kind of a driver here that could handle a big stepper motor, you would typically run 12 or 24 volts or something like that into here. As a separate power supply, you'd have the logic uh, telling it what to do coming over. And this, the Arduino would run off of its own power, this would run out of its own power, and you would just tie just the ground over, uh, just so that they both were talking the same uh, basic language. Uh, so that's just something I thought I should point out.
Uh, in this particular case, very small motor, not much torque. It's only drawing 100 milliamps. It's okay to do this, but you really need to keep an eye on that. Okay, now what I've done is I've written a little bit of a uh, little more sophisticated code. Uh, this allows you to set up, uh, tell it which pins your stepper is attached to. Um, and then this is just a, uh, a thing that tells it which pin is activated now out of that set. Um, there's a setup function here that just sets those all to digital output modes. And then there's this uh, function called move stepper. Uh, when you call in here, you can call it with one or negative one, depending on which direction you want it to move. And that just uh, uh, disenter unenergizes, takes the power off of uh, whatever pin is currently active, and um, then moves it. And then this just says, well, if you go past the end, wrap it back to the beginning. If you go past the beginning, wrap it back to the end, depending on which direction it's going. And then turn the next pin on. Um, and then all we have to do is just call setup stepper and then down below here I have um, this is uh, just going 200 steps in one direction with a delay in there and then 200 steps in the other direction with a delay in there and I've compiled that and uploaded it and here you see it running it's uh, this thing's got quite a few uh, steps per revolution I guess uh, since that's 200 steps uh, so anyway that's one of the little things you can do with it. Uh, I'm sure we'll think of something interesting to do with this uh, at some point, even if it's just to wave a little flag in a dumb little project. Catch you next time.